Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to another episode of Hashtag Epic Book Recs. So if you're new here, this is a series that I do on the Epic Reads channel every month where I recommend a bunch of YA books based on a certain theme. So I've done a bunch of themes in the past, but today's one is a really special one to me, and that is family. So every book in this video deals with family in some way. Either they have a really strong family element in the book, even if it's not completely focused on family, or there's a very unique kind of family structure in one of these books and I wanted to kind of let that representation show. So I absolutely loved each one of these and I think they are just some really great ones to read during this time of year and hopefully if you decide to pick up one of these books you will fall in love with these families the way that I did because they are really a huge part of why I love these books. So the first book that I want to recommend is Far From the Tree by Robin Benoy. This is a recent read for me and I absolutely adored it. This book follows three different perspectives and they are kind of intersecting in a very interesting way. It begins with Grace who is is a young girl in high school who has recently gotten pregnant and she finds out too far into her pregnancy so she has to go to full term but she knows she doesn't want to keep this baby she knows she can't afford it she knows she can't support this child so she ends up giving this baby away but Grace herself is an adopted child and so she knows that she was given away as a young baby and adopted by her new family and so after going through the experience with giving away her own baby she decides that she wants to learn more about her biological mother and so in the process Process of asking her parents about her biological mother, she finds out that she has two half siblings. One is Maya, who is her half sister, and the other is Yokon, who is her half brother. And so Grace ends up going on this journey to reach out to her two other siblings and also to potentially find her biological mother one day. And so we also meet Maya, who is adopted by a lovely family who is now going through a lot of trouble, and her parents are on the verge of divorce. She also has a younger sister who is a biological daughter of her parents, and so she also always has felt this sense that maybe they didn't actually want her. Maybe they wouldn't have adopted her if the younger sibling had been born earlier. And then our third sibling, Yokuan, was unfortunately not adopted by anyone when he was a young child. And so he ended up bouncing between foster homes for most of his life. And he's currently at a good home, but he doesn't know how to open himself up and really feel settled in one home. And so family has become a really kind of complicated thing for him. And so meeting his sisters is also a very difficult experience for him. But these three characters kind of come together in a really beautiful way. And I absolutely loved every moment of this book. I really, really loved the characters. They were just so vibrant and I felt so much for them and I really wanted everything to be okay for each one of them. And so I definitely recommend this if you are looking for a book with a very unique kind of family story. It was so well done and beautifully told and I just absolutely loved it. All right, the next book that I wanted to recommend to you today is Butterfly Yellow by Tang Ha Lee. So this is a book that I wanted to read the second I heard about it. And it is a part historical book and also a refuge story. It follows these two siblings, Hong and Lin, and the two of them were living in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and they were trying to escape. And so in the final days of the Vietnam War, they went to the airport with the intention of escaping, but the two of them get ripped apart and Lin was sent to America alone without Hong. And so six years later, Hong is determined to find her brother. She travels to America, to Texas, where she knows her brother is, but she doesn't know exactly how he's been or how he's been faring. And so she kind of goes in blind she doesn't know the language that well and she is just determined to find her brother and connect with him again and she ends up enlisting the help of this boy named Leroy who is this big city boy whose family wants him to go to Yale and like have these big aspirations but really all he wants to do is join the rodeo and become a cowboy in Texas so Leroy ends up getting roped into helping Hong find her brother and then once they do though things are not exactly what she was hoping for Lin doesn't actually remember her and he has taken on a new name and he has this new family that has taken him in and adopted him and he is kind of happy with his life the way it is and he doesn't really remember his life in Vietnam and so this is a story of those two siblings kind of reconnecting and finding each other again and I love that it was a refugee story as well it was very poignant and just really well told as well. And I loved hearing all of like the Vietnamese words in this book as well and just seeing Hong's kind of
kind of perspective on America and it was just really really interesting so I definitely recommend this if you wanted a diverse kind of story about a family that is ripped apart across borders and seas and finds each other again all right the next book that I want to recommend to you today is this time will be different by Misa Sugiyura I also read this recently and absolutely fell in love with it it is a story that is not completely focused on family but family is certainly a big part of it family history and current family issues and responsibilities play a huge part in this book if all our main characters see who is a Japanese American girl who lives with her mother and her aunt and her father has never really been in the picture and CJ's aunt owns a flower shop that has been owned by their family from since before Japanese internment during Second World War and so this is a flower shop that was owned by her family for generations and back during Japanese internment it was swindled away from her family by this wealthy white family called the McAllisters and her family was forced to buy it back for a much larger sum than it was originally sold for after the internment ended and so there's always been this kind of animosity between what happened back then and the condition that the flower shop is in currently because it's going through some financial troubles and CJ has never really had a passion for anything except for this flower shop and kind of finding flowers that have certain meanings that help people you know face big days in their lives and so when CJ's mother decides she's planning to sell the shop, CJ and her aunt and also the boy that happens to volunteer slash work at the flower shop with her kind of take it upon themselves to find a way to save the flower shop and end up involving themselves in a bit of activism as well. I absolutely love this book and the relationship that you see between CJ and her mother and also her aunt and the way that they are this very tight-knit group of strong, amazing women forming a family together. But I also really love the element of family kind of reaching across generations and seeing CJ try to seek reparations for what happened to her family you know years and years ago and this book also has some really good conversations about race and privilege and reparations and I thought that all of that was absolutely amazing so I cannot recommend this book enough all right the next book that I want to recommend to you today is I'll give you the sun by Jandy Nelson so this is the paperback cover but this is the original cover that it had and I kind of picked this up on a whim because I know a lot of people really really love this book and they were all completely right because it was absolutely wonderful and beautifully beautifully written. This book follows two twin siblings Jude and Noah during two separate points in their lives. So the first timeline follows Noah's perspective when they're both 14 and back then they were inseparable. Noah was always drawing, Jude was always doing her sculptures and her art but when Noah starts falling in love with the boy next door and Jude starts kind of doing crazier things with her popular friends and cliff diving and doing all of that there's this kind of animal that starts to build between them and the second timeline is following Jude's perspective and she is much changed from who she was years ago and she is in the process of meeting this intriguingly mysterious boy and also gaining a new mentor for her art they both have half of the story and you're seeing it kind of come together in these alternating chapters that they both tell and I honestly thought this book was so interesting and so poetically written there are parts of this book that really feel like a dream or some kind of magical realism because of the imagination that both of these characters have they both are heavily involved with art and so that kind of bleeds into the prose and it was honestly just so gorgeous to read so I definitely recommend this if you're looking for a kind of interesting sibling relationship. All right, and the last book that I have to recommend today is probably an unconventional one to recommend as a family book because it is known for so many other things. But I do feel like one of the reasons that I absolutely loved this book was for the family aspect and for the family dynamics in this book. And so that book is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So as many of you may know, this book follows our main character, Star Carter, in the aftermath of a horrible event to where her childhood friend is murdered by a police officer and the event kind of spirals out of control in the media and Star is the only witness to this crime. And so she, along with her family and community, are trying to make sure that this police officer gets the punishment that he deserves and they are dealing with the political implications of this whole event. This book is amazing for so many, so many reasons. I absolutely loved the very raw and stunning way that it dealt with all of the very heavy topics but one of the things I absolutely loved about this book was the family and the community within this book. Although Star has the family that she lives with so her mother, father, and her younger brother she also has a half brother that lives in another home dealing with a lot of other difficult situations and there's a strong sense of community in this book that really feels like family you know star knows all the people in garden heights and she talks to them on a regular basis and when something happens to each of them she really feels 
for them all. And although there are some very difficult things happening in her community, they are all there for each other. And seeing Star and her parents kind of deal with this whole situation and seeing her parents support her throughout the course of this book was just so wonderful and amazing. And I just really, really loved all the conversations between her and her family. So this is definitely a book where family is not the primary focus, but it really is a huge part of the book and I cannot recommend it enough. But those are all of the books that I wanted to recommend today. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you got a new book rec that you want to pick up sometime soon. But as per usual, please leave me a comment down below with some of your favorite books based on the theme of this video. So family, I would love to hear all of your thoughts and recommendations. But that's about all I have to say. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next episode of Hashtag Epic Book Recs. Bye!